On Google Hangout today, Malam Nasir Arafah is great to have you here today. Great to see you. <laughs> so, those who are online, before we begin to talk to Malam Nasir Arafah, let us begin to see who is online. We've got someone else on, on the line. Yes, you're hanging out with us on channels, television. State of the nation is what we're looking at with Malam, Nuh, uh, Malam Nasir El Rufai Nu is going. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, your name and where are you from? Rafael, where are you calling in from? Yeah, I'm calling from London, England. Okay, very wow. good. What's your question, Rafael? Yeah, oh, my question to Malam is, um, what advice would you give young professional Nigerians all over the world that want to contribute to Nigeria? That's the growth of Nigeria. And are uh, afraid of the situation currently happening in Nigeria. Okay, good question. Thank you, Rafael. Madam. Well, th thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Rafael. Um, this is a difficult question very difficult question uh, but you have to know that no matter how long you stay abroad you hit a glass ceiling okay this is the only country where you'll be able to achieve your full potentials so once you realize that uh, you know that it's inevitable you have to come back my advice is to do three things first you must remain engaged with nigeria don't just switch off and only come home for christmas or easter you must remain engaged. Luckily, technologies give you the ability to remain engaged. Read the news, follow the leaders, and join chat rooms and you know contribute. Complain. Because it is only when you complain, when you hold leaders to account, that they will improve. So get engaged via social media, uh, regular visits home, and so on and so forth. Remain connected to the country. That is my first advice. Secondly, uh, succeed. Make a lot of money. Develop yourself while you are abroad. Get as much education as you want. Uh, be active in Nigerian community. Contribute as much as you can. Get a lot of education. Acquire a lot of skills. And make a lot of money. Okay? Thirdly, join politics. Join a political party. The only way you can change the world is if you have political power. Okay? Some of us got the opportunity to be in government and did a few things because others got power and brought us in okay but once you are appointed you are dispensable you need to be elected to have real power so join politics i didn't join politics early enough i'm too old now but as young people join a political party even now subscribe be part of the decision when it is time for elections come home contribute Sit at the political table when the politicians are planning to do things. You may stop some killings because when you hear them planning to kill someone, you may stop one or two. You have to be part of politics to be able to change. And then when you are 40 years old, come back to Nigeria. Don't stay beyond 40. Because if you stay beyond 40, by the time you come back, all your mates would have retired. Would have been governors and ministers and probably have retired. We have a very high turnover in this country. People get to the top very early. I was director general at 39, I was minister at 43. By the time I was 47, I was done with government. Okay? So you have to come back home before you hit 40 or in your early 40s. Come back, by then you have money, so you can join public service, take a low, take a pay cut, and still be honest. Okay? That is why it's important to make money. Because relocation costs to Nigeria are very high. We don't have a mortgage system, so you have to buy your own house and pay cash. You don't have consumer finance, so you have to pay 100% for your car. And a few things like that. That's why you need money. And the pay in the public service is low. So for you to remain honest, to be above corruption, you have to have achieved a level of comfort where people will offer you money and you say it's not worth my aid. So this is, this is what I would advise you and every young man and woman that is out there. But this country needs you. This country needs your skills and your experience so that we achieve our potential. But this is also the only place where we achieve yours. So there is a, there is a symbiosis, there is a meeting of minds. All right, Suleiman, introduce Hello. yourself quickly, then you're live. Hello. So, your question Hello. for Madam Nasir. Suleiman, right? Yes, yes, you're live, yes. All right, I have, have, have two questions from the government. 
Yes. Go on. But uh, my main concern is basically that the opposition political parties in Nigeria basically follow the same pattern that the ruling parties or the same path that the PDP decided to go, you know. So my thing, my, my main concern is like as uh, the head of the regional committee, what um uh, what, what contribution will he make in order to make one of our position, polit opposition political party based yeah, yeah. on ideology like we have in developed economies? Yeah. You know, basically, political parties here are argued on ideological terms, like where you have left, right wings, you know. I mean, for example, like if you are from left, you sell, say, okay, we, 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 our main policies is big government. If you are right, if you are from right wing, our main policy is smaller government, free market. I mean, so we, that's, I mean, how do you think that uh, we can build a political party based on ideology? That's my question to you. Okay, thank you very much, Raman from Sweden. Yes, very quickly, well, um First, uh, let me admit that the parties are generally the same because they all came from the same uh, foundations. I mean, what you see today as CPC, many of the members of the CPC came either from ANPP or the PDP and so on. Uh, those that you see in ACN today were either members of AD or PDP. Okay. So to that extent, uh, there is some similarity between all the parties and in, our in, in my opinion, uh, the one of the weaknesses of all our political parties is not enough internal democracy. Uh, and this is what we are focusing on in the CPC. I think if we make parties uh, owned by the membership and influenced by the membership and they do what the members want, then those parties will not only be truly internally democratic, but they will evolve their own ideology. Um, but the CPC is, has an ideology. It is a center of left party whose main objective is achieving social justice for every Nigerian. And uh, if you look at our manifesto for the 2011 elections, you see clearly steps that we've taken to make that ideology very clear. But it is one thing to say this is my ideology, it is quite another to actually live it. And I think one of the outcomes of the renewal committee process is that we in the CPC would actually need that ideology. So I'm hoping that over the next few months when we complete the renewal process and over the next few years as we re-engineer our party and merge with other parties, you know, this ideology will become very clear. Ideologies emerge over time. They are not something you just say. Uh, but I believe that we are on the way. But, 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 but as I said, as I said, the main defect of Nigerian political parties is the absence of internal democracy. And I think that's where the CPC will lead in giving examples of how other parties should behave. Okay, uh, Gwenga, you are from Santa Fe in California. What's the time in California at this point in time? Um, it's 9 a.m. It's 9 a.m. Okay, that's great. So we will be getting back to you. What is your opinion? Because we are just got a question from Adoali Anthony Odubel. I said, what's your opinion? about the fuel subsidy probe. Do you think it's being exhausted? And do you think the report is good enough? I think the report is good enough basis to begin to take certain actions. Exhausted, they have done well. I mean, this is a very good job by the House of Representatives. They are not trained to investigate. But if you look at the report, you see there are enough facts, there is enough meat there for any serious government to take to the next level, okay? It, it, investigation can never be exhausted. Okay, but if you cover 60-70% of the space, that's enough to go on. The report has established that many organizations got paid for doing nothing. I think the government doesn't need any investigation to ask those people to just refund the money as a first step. You don't need any investigation. You mistakenly paid them or wrongly paid them. Send them a debit note to pay back the money as a first step. Okay, in most civilized countries, when things like this happen, yes. civil society take action. Yes. What do you expect Nigerians to be doing now? Well, I, I think many civil society organizations have spoken. 
have indicated that they will take action unless the government takes certain action. Um, now that the report has been adopted by the House, I think we should allow a reasonable time for the government to act or not act. If the government doesn't act, I think all civil society organizations should organize and protest on the streets as a first step. Because there is no country in the world where a few companies will steal two-thirds of the entire revenues of the country in one given year. And then they just walk away spot. Okay, let's uh, look at who's on, on our Google Hangout today. Who's there? And let's see. Introduce yourself again so that you can then have a chance to ask Madam Nasir El Rufai one question very quickly. Yeah, my question uh, regarding the uh, protest as uh, Madam uh, El Rufai mentioned that the, the CSO has come out and uh, go ahead and protest. Well, my concern is if the government begins to crack down then, like the January protest, uh, how do you uh, kind of critique when, you know, government is tear gas on you or various stuff like that? Okay, Wenga, you are in Santa Fe, California, you said, right? Um, all right. Okay. Uh, I'll let uh, Madam Erufai respond to that. Well, Benga, you know, the solution to any government crackdown is more protests. Okay. As they crack down, more and more people come out and the world sees them. This is the day, this is the world of the, of the internet, uh, global television, satellite television, and high reports. They cannot crack down for too long. We are 168 million people. There are 60,000 soldiers in this country. They are not large enough or armed enough to kill all of us. And if they kill all of us, who will they govern? So we come out, we protest and protest until they solve the problem. Why do you think the January uh, protest came to a halt? I, I think I think I think civil society puts too much trust in the Nigerian Labour Congress and the TUC. And uh, that was a mistake. The TUC and the NLC are labor unions, but they are established. They are part of the establishment. At the end of the day, they will compromise because they are part of the establishment. In any society, labor unions are part of the establishment. I think next time, civil society should organize as civil society and get their own voice and forget forget the labor unions because the labor unions will always compromise with the government of the day because they are partners. Okay, we'll move on from Benga, the next uh, gentleman on there, uh, that is supposed to be Mohammed. 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 Yes, Mohammed, yes, where uh, are you calling in from? Introduce yourself quickly, Mohammed, and then make your comments or question. Okay, I'm uh, Hilal Mohammed, uh, I'm calling from Abuja. Okay. Uh, actually, Madam Nasr al is my mentor. I follow him on Twitter and Facebook and all other media that I put. So I use this opportunity to once again follow him. Okay, very good. Well done. Do you have a comment or a question? Uh, no, no, no. I don't have a question, but I'm very interested in whatever he's going to discuss. And I'd like to express gratitude to Charles TV for this wonderful gesture. Okay, that's good. Keep, that was very initiative. Thank you. Okay, keep watching channels. Okay, so we'll Thank take you, the next yeah. person there. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, we've got somebody from Britain. Do you have a comment on what we're doing? This is Channels Television hanging out with Madam El Rufai. This is all about the state of the nation in Nigeria. Who are you? Do you have a question or do you have a comment? Uh, I do have a comment. Hi, it's Mike here from England. I've been hanging out using Google Hangouts for 10 months and I'm all over America as well as Europe, so I just want to say thank you to see you hanging out today. And um, I do have one of the on air live channels if you ever did want to use it to go live at YouTube, which is fantastic to see. Okay, so that's your comment. And uh, your name? It's Mike. Mike, Mike calling yeah. in from England. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, what is your perception of where we are as far as security of Nigeria is concerned? Well, um, I think it's clear to everyone that the state of uh, insecurity has never been this bad. I think um, this is the worst possible time uh, to look at the level of security in Nigeria. Things have never been this bad. 
many people have just resorted to prayers because when you leave your home in many parts of the country you are not sure you'll come back you don't know when you'll meet the next bomb or the next robbery or or kidnapping and so on uh, levels of insecurity are extremely high uh, it is worrying indeed very worrying okay so when we say level of insecurity is very worrying we know that we came from somewhere to get to where we are. Yeah. What do you think the government should be looking at at this point in time in terms of solutions? <clears throat> well, you know, I think that uh, the reason why fundamentally we are where we are is because of bad governance. Yeah. Years of neglect of social services, functioning government and investments in infrastructure and every environment to create jobs has brought us to where we are. It has taken years to build up, but the chicken has finally come home to roost. So fundamentally, you know, government should be looking at addressing the issues that give rise to this insecurity. Uh, when you make six million babies every year, and in 18 years they join the workforce, you must be thinking of actively how to create jobs. We've had governments, particularly in the last five years, that does not think about things like that. So you know, that's the fundamental problem. You have to look at the demographics and your resources and plan for the future. It's not being done. This is the fundamental problem. Okay. The, the, the second problem, of course, is uh, corruption. And uh, corruption always leads to violence. Uh, income inequality, corruption, and unemployment, when you put that together with poverty, the inevitable outcome of such a cocktail is, is violence, violent crimes, and terrorism. And um, so the, the government must have a multiple, multi-pronged strategy. First, to look at the fundamental issue. That will take time to sort out. Okay? You can't create jobs overnight. You can't build infrastructure overnight. But you can begin to spend your money wisely so that you see, you, people have hope that one day these issues will be, will be addressed. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you need to look at the current situation and apply a, a mix of uh, initiatives to resolve it. Okay? The third leg is for the government to genuinely begin to look for solutions, not to look for others to blame. Okay? Because any time the government speaks, they say, oh, we know the sponsors of Boko Haram. If you know them, name them, prosecute them. Why would it be difficult for government to name them? Because, be, because, because, because they don't know. If you look, if you are a sitting government and you have people that are financing or sponsoring an insurgency that threatens that government, you don't need anything to do. You you act on that. You arrest them. You you put them through due process of law. Thank you. Oh no, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just a uh, uh, comment I want to ask him about. He advising us in the diaspora of uh, for coming back home. Yes, you know, yes. As, as possible. So it's not like a personal matter because the, pro the challenges I think we're having in Nigeria is like in Nigeria you know you you can't be anything in Nigeria if your father does not belong to the caucus you know if your father is not a party chief then you know you can't be anything I mean in Nigeria it's obvious all of it's an obvious to it that we know that we run a parental government in Nigeria which cares for its own you know so it's no longer a government of merit. Yeah, I, I, I yes, uh, Suleiman, I do not entirely disagree with you. Okay, but what is the solution? Do we give up and it remains the same, or we come back and organize to change it? Um, I believe that such a system that depends on connections rather than merit is not sustainable, and this is why we are where we are. Okay, um, a situation whereby third class honors graduates that are connected to people in power get jobs, while first class honors graduates uh, don't have jobs, creates the kind of hopelessness in society that creates that leads to the violence that we are seeing, including Boko Haram. So we all know we are at a tether, and something's got to give. This so system, yeah. this system has to change. Yeah. So, 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 so my, 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 what I say is that everyone should come back home and let us work together to challenge this system. 
right? The solution is not to give it up. It is not a fair system, it is not a merit-based system, but we must come together, join political parties, and change it. Your dad may not be a chieftain, but you can be a chieftain. What stops you from being a chieftain? You can join our party and, and be a chieftain. We are looking for people like you. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, do we have another Nigerian in diaspora who's got a question? Anybody next? Uh... Okay. All right. Benga, go and ask a question. Oh, suddenly we lost your audio, Benga. Oh, sorry. Okay, good. Yeah, I was in you. Okay. Um, so, what do you think uh, some of the good business opportunities that are in Nigeria for now that somebody <laughs> in diaspora can come and take advantage of and make some decent money at home? <laughs> but okay. if I knew, I would go into that business too. But seriously, look. Nigeria is a country of 167 million people. And every year we make between 6 to 7 million babies. Surely, a country with that kind of population, with per capita incomes in excess of $1,000 per person, surely there are businesses a clever person like you would be able to get. To get okay? So I, 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 I don't know whether I need to tell you which business to, to, to go in or whatever, I'm not, I'm not an expert in those matters. I'm not much of a business man myself. Okay. 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 Yeah. I'm not much of a businessman myself and I'm not sure uh, I'm in the best position to advise you, but I think a country with our, with, with our population, a country with our population and natural and human resources uh, should have ample opportunities for you to take advantage of. Uh, what do you, it depends on what you're doing uh, in, in, in the country that you live and what experiences and expertise you have. But I'm sure if you come to this country and look around, you will not have shortage of business opportunities. Yeah, but I think um, in addition with the government doing an outside of things, mm -hmm. with infrastru infrastructure, yeah. uh, people from the diaspora, the just in the diaspora, can come back home. Um, putting some good startup business, you know, and it will create income, you know, uh, generate jobs and make things better in Nigeria. I agree. Who knows? May you may be the next Ali Kodangote, but come back and look for one area of opportunity and focus on it. Uh, Ali Kodangote started selling uh, Ankara clothes in Lagos uh, 30 years ago. Today, Look at where he is, you know. We we're doing our youth service then and laughing at him and saying that look at this classmate of ours. Instead of going to university, he has decided to be selling a tamba in Lagos. But uh, today he's worth uh, billions of dollars and I'm worth uh, just uh, 20 naira. That's life, you know. But I believe that a country with our opportunity, with our size, our natural resources, our human resources, has limitless opportunities. Virtually everything you scratch, you are just scratching the surface. We have challenges, you are right. We don't have electricity, that's a big problem. We don't have transportation infrastructure, that's not good enough, okay? Our financial system is far from uh, friendly to entrepreneurs and investors, true. Sanusi is trying, but we are not there yet. But amidst all these challenges, we produce the richest man, the richest black man in the world. So it means that it is possible to achieve it if you put your mind at it and you are ready to work uh, 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 20 hours a day, 7 days a week, for 30 years. Aliko has done it. The man doesn't sleep. I call him any time and he picks my call. He doesn't sleep. Even though he has too much money. I sleep for longer hours than him, which explains my uh, part of my poverty. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Benga. There's uh, someone on, on Twitter who's just asked a question. He said, uh, Nasir Arufai was a part of government that would not provide the basics in terms of housing, in but, terms willfully, of housing. Yes, uh -huh. but willfully destroy citizens' efforts. What's your response to that? <laughs> well, look, so it, is, it, it, it is not the job of the government to provide housing. We are not, uh, 
uh, in that business. But our our that job and I sign the uh, sun water house. No, no, no. Look, look, look. There, there are certain things that I believe the government should provide. Okay, yeah. water is one of them. Education yeah. is another. Healthcare is another. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that uh, government should provide electricity. Part of the reason why we don't have electricity was because we expect government to provide it. Okay, I was head of BP and I actively promoted the deregulation of the telecoms industry and electricity industry. Look at the results of telecoms. We are doing this because we deregulated telecoms. Okay, we need to do the same thing in power and work is being done in that regard. So I don't believe government should provide certain things. Okay, um, housing is not something the government can successfully provide. Uh, I think what the government ought to create is an environment for a thriving mortgage system. It's, if people have incomes and there is a mortgage system, they will own homes. Everywhere in the world where you achieved 70-80% home ownership, you, we, we, that was achieved not because government built houses, but because they created a mortgage system and that's what we did. And that's what we started doing in Abuja when we sold federal government houses. And we actually had a mortgage system working in Abuja as a pilot and it was supposed to be mainstream throughout the country. Okay, So that's that. Now. Yes, we demolish houses, but we did so because they broke the law. You can't break the law. You can't, you know, if, you, I don't know where you live, but if you live in England, go to Hyde Park and try to put up a building and see what will happen to you. Uh, so this uh, talk about, oh, we, 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 we demolish people's houses, uh, does not take into account that those houses were illegal buildings in the first place, or they were threatening to, 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 to public interest. So we did what we did, and I, I still say it. We don't have any apologies for what we did, because those that broke the law should bear the consequences. It's as simple as that. Yeah, Ludwig, where are you from? And um, we're looking at State of the Nation in Nigeria. Okay, my name is Ludwig van Rotter. I'm from Belgium. Okay, from Belgium. All right, you've got comments or... Oh, wow, okay. You've got comments or questions on the state of uh, Nigeria? Um, no. no. I have no question now, but uh, I want to see what it's all about here. It's the first time in your channel. Uh, okay, well, do join in anytime we have another hangout. Thank you very much. Next. Alright, thank you very much, Benga, and thank you everybody. Don't forget, add us to your uh, circles. Uh, just make sure you add us to your circles on Google and uh, on Google Plus, and we will be having another session very soon. And uh, we're very thankful that you joined us today. So, you have a good Sunday. And we'll be looking forward to having you back. Madam Nasir Arufai, thank you very much. It's been great. Thank you. Being the very first on Google Hangouts on any Nigerian television station or any Nigerian website. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.